told uh, our group that we will, uh, my job is to make sure that we have a spirited practice tomorrow and that these guys learn how to compete uh, and play against smaller, tougher players because that's what we came across. We came across guys that were undersized, but I think that was the epitome of it's not the size of a dog in a fight, but the size of a fight in a dog. They just wanted it more than we did. Uh, you know, we dominated them on the glass. We fell in love for whatever reason. We fell in love with the three-pointer. We were three of six in the beginning of the game. And like an immature young team, which is what we're playing like, uh, and our veterans got to uh, help us in the process of maturing these guys. He, uh, you know, we fell in love with the three. We ended up shooting 27 three-pointers. Now, granted, four or five at the end, you know, in the last two minutes because he's trying to play catch up. But see, that's not the way this team is built. We're not that great a shooting team. We're, we're, we're a decent shooter. And, and our good shooters have been struggling. John Severe hasn't been making shots. Um, Eric Pascal didn't make shots the last two games. Uh, you know, and look, it's his second college game. Um, or third college game, but you know you can't half your field goals can't come from three when you're when you're that size. Uh, but it's on me. I've got to find a way to get these guys motivated and get these guys get Brian Smith and Mandel Thomas and Ryan Rooms uh, leading this group uh, along with myself, obviously. So the burden when we lose, it's me. And uh, you know this is this is uh, this is not a good one. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I thought it was a, a game we played. Uh, you know, we we played poorly in the first half, and at halftime, I was saying to myself, "Well, I'm glad we got that out of our system." And we came off a game in Maryland where we played really hard and really well, and none of that tonight. I didn't see the intensity. I didn't see the, uh, the toughness. So hopefully, it's a lesson learned to, to these young players. But winning Division One basketball games against anybody is a tough thing, and if winning was easy, everybody would do it. I tell the team that all the time. They let them take the fight to us after the initial. Once again, we jump out on people, and uh, as an immature team, I think we think, all right, we got this one in the bag. We're up 11 to three or whatever, and uh, you know, then we go to the bench, and then boom, they make their run back at us. So, uh, you know, we got a lot of growing up to do. We got a lot of growing up to do. Uh, that's it. Your thoughts. God Tom, bless you. Tom, even though it's his third game, you feel like Eric might be a little a little trigger happy and pressing, maybe a little Very much so, without a doubt. I said to him, look, you know, you're you got a chance to be a big time player, but you know, you're bailing teams out by just jacking up those threes. You know, when he gets him uh, a good look at him and he's patient and he's in stride, it's one thing, but you know, we just uh, our shot selection was atrocious. And uh, that's why we shot thirty four percent. When you say it was embarrassing, are you looking at anything specifically? Well, I just, just look, my teams, you know, um, I've always had teams that played hard and competed, and I didn't feel like we played hard enough tonight, and we didn't compete hard enough. And that, nothing, nothing uh, strikes a chord with me or any coach, in my opinion, more than that. So uh, that's what we need to do. We need to realize that, uh, you know, that you're not going to get what you want out of life. You're going to get what you deserve. And we didn't deserve to win tonight. They did because they just kept hanging around, hanging around. And I think in the back of our guys' minds, they were like, all right, we'll make some shots. We'll make some shots. And once a it's an immature way to look at the game. And uh, and I got to get them old. That's my job. With seven freshmen, I got to get them old. And I got to get more from Rooms and more from Thomas and more from Smith because those are the three veterans. So they've got to, uh, they've got to demand more as well. Uh, and you know, it's sometimes, I mean, Ryan Rooms had a double-double, but in the first half he didn't get a whole lot done at all. You know, so if he plays like that in the first half, I mean, heck, we probably got to have an eight or 10 point lead in the first half. Uh, and then we miss eight free throws. You know, we shoot damn near 90% from the foul line every day in practice. And then we miss eight free throws. And look, you can make excuses. I'm not here to make excuses. You can say they're young. You can say blah, blah, blah. Lights come on, all of that nonsense. Players play, man. Players play. I've coached freshmen that have dominated games. Is is John becoming a little more concerned? 17 minutes, one for five. Seems, seems yeah, he's like got to make some shots, and he's got to stop turning the ball over. I mean, when you look at his numbers overall, you know, he's got to, he's got to just, the only way you get out of a shooting slump is working. 
So what do you do? I, I would hope he'd be in the gym tonight after everyone gets out of here. They have to, they could be in this gym till midnight. They, you know, I would hope he'd be in here shooting a couple hundred jumpers with a teammate or with the gun. Uh, and that goes for a number of the guys. Uh, the only way you get out of slumps in, in any sport, you take more BP and you know, in baseball, you just live in the cage and you, and you get your mechanics down. Well, it's no different shooting a basketball. So, uh, you know, I tell them all the time, and this is the God's honest truth, I don't decide who plays, they do. So after practice each day, that my staff and I watch practice separately, and then we come together as a group and we discuss practice, who's playing well and who deserves minutes and all of those things. So, you know, you want to get on the floor, you got to perform every day in practice, and that'll get you more minutes. John got 17 minutes tonight. Uh, you know, I'd probably like him and the other guards in a perfect world, they'd all be playing about 25 minutes a game. But the bottom line is tonight, who, you know, who are you going to go to with the exception of uh, I mean, we shot 30, you know, guys, we shot 34%. Room, you know, Pascal was 7 for 16. Everybody else was 3 of 7, 3 of 8, 3 of 11, Mandel Thomas. All right, those are back-to-back -back games now. He's like 6 for 31 or, or 7 for 31, something like that. Got to make shots. You got to make plays. You got to finish. So. Brian had 13 and 15, and now with, with Canty, now that he's in a red shirt. How much more are you expecting out of room two this year? Yeah, we need a lot. And tonight's a tough game for the team because they're so small. So, you, you know, we, we played a little bit of zone when we were out there, but they uh, they went on a stretch where they missed jumpers in the zone. We weren't able to come down and score. We were, They went on a stretch where they missed free throws. We weren't able to come down and score. And, uh, you know, the most important statistic in the end of the game is obviously the offensive field goal percentage. So, Coach. Um, you mentioned earlier your team, you know, having poor, uh, having a struggle, struggling in the free throw line on the second half. Tell me, how frustrated is it um, when your team can't take care of the little things like uh, taking care of the ball and missing free throws? How frustrated yeah. is that? Now look, the coach? bottom line is if you make layups, you make free throws, and you don't turn the ball over, you're going to win a lot of basketball games. And we missed layups, we missed free throws, and we turned the ball over, and that's why we didn't win tonight. The glaring stat is the turnovers. You know, and uh, Zarkovic, who just played great, against a Big Ten team in Maryland. I think he had one, two turnovers, Jeff. Yeah. And then, you know, to come in and have six tonight at home against a, a team from a lower level conference, you can't have it. You can't have it. And once again, always a freshman. Eric Bats got five turnovers, always a freshman. So what? So what? They're, they're the best players. That's why they're on the floor. They're out playing other people in practice. So they've got to respond. But you're right. I mean, those are the little things that matter. If you hold the uh, if you hold a team, they shot 42%, 36 in the first half, 48 in the second. If you hold a team to 42% from the floor and you out-rebound them by 14, you got to you win the basketball game. The only way you can't is by turning the basketball over. And, uh, you know, 18 turnovers to, did that. So that, that took care of that. Coach, coming off those two tough spots on the road the past week, yeah. knowing what you have ahead, you guys don't leave the city until – January 7th. Right. This stretch of games here against non-conference opponents, this is a crucial yeah. uh, point of the year. How, how much, though, of tonight was kind of a must-win situation and kind of get things going? Yeah. In their eyes or in mine? Both. I mean, I think we look at the game differently, obviously, but I mean, you know, look, we, we maybe we learned to lose this week. You know what I mean? That's one of the issues with going and playing games like that. But you got to be resilient enough to build off it, and then now we had the opportunity to put it behind us. And uh, every game's a must-win in my eyes. I mean, you know, must-win. You know, come on. We got to, you know, you got to go out. You got to win every game. It's not okay to lose. You never want to do that. And at the end of the year, games balance out. So if you think, oh, we're going to get this one, and we're not going to get this one, it never plays out that way. So you know, you got to bring it every night. That's what college basketball is all about.